that is amaravati school of art it is flourished in present day andhra pradesh right so it offering a distinct perspective compared with the gandhara and mathura schools so if you see the period it flourished between second century bc to third century ad right so its peak under the satavahana dynasty and later during the ikshvakus also you will find this patronage for this art good afternoon students welcome back to pluto science and today is our 70th day all right so today we are disc uh, are going to discuss one of the important topics that is uh, schools of art schools of ar architecture schools of architecture uh, so you know very well in ancient ancient india there are two i mean the schools of architecture they can be divided into three categories majorly uh, those are the gandhara school of art the <coughs> mathura school of art and the last one amaravati school of art apart from that we will also see some uh, distinct uh, architectural features like uh, the uh, pala dynasty there were distinct style of sculpture sculptures have been produced during the pala dynasty so pala dynasty art uh, during pala dynasty you will also see a different trend in painting also pala school of art so similarly when it comes to sculpture also you will see a distinct characteristic features in the pala dynasty we will see that and apart from that you will also see a, i mean uh, the brilliance of sculpture making during the uh, chola dynasty chola time period so especially that period is known for the uh, making of the bronze idols of nataraja right so it is another form of lord shiva nataraja will be depicted in the form of uh, nataraja right so the cosmic dance of the lord shiva or lord rudra so those idols are famous during that period so apart from the uh, the earlier i mean the known schools of art i have already mentioned the uh, gandhara school and the mathura school right so gandhara school it uh, it was uh, it flourished between 1st century to 5th century bc so mostly you will see the influence of greco roman art on that uh, art so especially you will see the features like curly hair round face bulged eyes uh, muscular muscular body or muscular physique etc they draped the clothes so these kind of uh, i mean uh, features you will see so you can see a curved curly hairs round shaped face muscular muscular body physique and they draped the cloths so there will be folds on the uh, i mean uh, the cloths whatever the cloths are depicted on the sculpture so you will see drapes on the sculpture so these are all these are greco roman uh, Uh, influence we can say on the there is a blend of indian features and also the impact of greek greco roman aspects we will see so mostly whatever the sculpt, sculpture produced uh, during the celsa uh, during this era uh, era or for that matter if you see most of the sculpt, sculptures produced in this era are belonging to buddhism only so you will see lot many idols of buddha and bodhisattvas Uh, hardly here and there you will see the idols related to jainism like fasting mahavira you will see that idol right so this image belongs to gandhara school of art so apart from that mathura school of art you will see it flourished between 3rd century uh, bc to 3rd century ad it developed in mathura uh, right so after it spread to other uh, i mean uh, nearby places also you will see completely contrast uh, features here the you will see a fleshy uh, fleshy muscles or body building uh, you will see a uh, soft sculpture and you will see uh, you will you will not particularly see a round shape and you will see mostly plain clothes not the draped clothes plain cool clothes you will see All right so here you will see uh, behind the head you will see a circular shape that uh, to give a feeling of divineness 
to give the feeling of divineness or to feel the uh, to give the feel like god so a circular uh, shape will be placed uh, behind the uh, head of the uh, the the whatever uh, the sculpture is there it is placed so it gives the divine feeling right so this is about the mathura school of art next you know very well the amravati school of art it flourished during second century bc to third century and it is it is flourished in in, uh, in amravati which is located in the coastal andhra pradesh region it was a center of buddhism at that time right so it is known for its intricate narrative relics uh, reliefs depicting the life of buddha and also jataka tales so you will see all these things in the uh, amaravati, amaravati school of art so this particular school developed in the southern part of the country and no doubt it is also spread to sri lanka and other nearby countries like maldives etc right so apart from that i have uh, told in the medieval time we can see do two distinctive developments in the uh, sculpture that has been made at that time one is uh, the uh, pala dynasty school or we can call it as pala school of art it flourished between 8th to 12th centuries uh, ad between 8th and 12th centuries ad and uh, here you can uh, see the sculpture how the detailing has been done in the panels uh, that is pala school of art and this uh, i have already explained chola school of art it is the period is particular particularly known for the making making of bronze bronze idols of nataraja right so gandhara uh, style uh, gandhara style if you see it is developed to the north western part of india right so here you will see the development of gandhara school of art you will see the impact of greco roman style on that right so this art flourished between 1st century ad to 7th century uh, 7th century ad in the northwestern pakistan especially the northwestern part of the indian subcontinent you will see so it is closely and widely associated with the mahayana school of buddhism right there you will see buddha and also the bodhisattva slot many uh, we can say the previous baths of buddha the those are known as the uh, bodhisattvas so uh, when uh, buddha's previous births when buddha bo- uh, born in pre- his uh, previous birth so all about these things they are mentioned in jataka tales jataka tales are there they are about the previous births of buddha so the previous births of buddha are known as bodhisattvas so apart from depiction of buddha the depiction of bodhisattvas is also there in this particular particular school of art so features it has very uh, peculiar characteristic features like you will see the greco roman art uh, influence uh, it will here you will see the human form of buddha right so earlier like uh, symbolic representations earlier buddha used to be represented with the symbols like lotus elephant uh, the chakra etc so these are the these depict the lifestyle life events of buddha so buddha used to be depicted with these uh, symbols especially with the lotus with elephant etc so unlike that styles in the gandhara art buddha represented in the human form human form right so buddha uh, is being represented in the realistic form in the gandhara art right. so physical details if you see the artist paid very close uh, uh, attention to detailing body especially the presentation of the body so musculate body you will see wavy hair or curvy hair like the, the i mean the the features is there in the the greek god of apollo the sun god he is a i mean the sun god in the greek tradition he is known as apollo so you will see a wavy or curly hair for that god so same is that is given to the uh uh sculpture of the buddha also right so and even you will see the facial expressions also uh, they resemble the the sun god of greeks that is uh, uh, he is apollo so indian elements also you will see subject matter is indian only so mahayana mahayana buddhism it has broad, i mean it is or it has origin in india and it flourished in india so subject is taken from india only symbolism 
so they are depicted uh, realistically though they are depicted realistically there are some symbolic elements uh, uh, remain like urn urna or mark on the buddha's forehead halo so you will uh, see a halo around the buddha's head this is also found in the greco roman art it is interpreted here to signify the spiritual enlightenment uh, the it is a core indian tradition right technical aspects if you see so materials if you see uh, ma local materials like sheets uh, cyst fine grained uh, metamorphic rock were often used in sculptures narrative reliefs also you will see drapery so uh, on cloths you will see lot many folds this is also influence of the greco roman so you will see drapery the way clothing folds and the drapings on figures is often reminiscent of the greco roman side so overall if you see there is a fusion of the indian and the greco roman traditions naturalism you will see depiction of natural uh, figures in this art locations are afghanistan present in northwestern india so many cities are there taxila peshawar bigram hadda uh, bamaran so all these places you will see so the afghanistan the location of bamiyan valley bamiyan valley in afghanistan so though uh, uh, the valley has been destroyed when uh, taliban have occupied the country and they ruled for some uh, some time so now also again the taliban have again captured the power and they are ruling afghanistan so some part uh, at some part also uh, before i like 10 to 15 years back they were in power in afghanistan before us was uh, before us intervened so at that time they have destroyed the bamiyan valley there were many many sculptures of buddha uh, very in a b very very big site the mountains have, have been carved into the statues of buddha so they have all been destroyed uh, because you know in islam the idolatry has been pro prohibited because of that they have destroyed the buddhas but still you will find lot many reminiscences of gandhara school of architecture there so here you will see one of the image i have taken so this is a buddha carved in the bamiyan valley uh, so like this many uh, sculptures are there of buddha so they have been defaced and damaged by the uh, uh, taliban there right so uh, gain to buddha of bamiyan also you will see they have destroyed by the taliban right these are some examples right so uh, if you see the fa other famous examples like seated buddha uh uh he, it is there in shaikhanderi in pakistan so this is a third century sculpture so here also you will see the greco roman impact so draped clothes circular face curly hair right masculine body etc all these features you will see right so yeah, another example is head of bodhisattva victoria albert museum london so this uh, important or we can say precious idol has been taken away by the britishers during the british rule now it is placed in uh, uh, victoria museum london so here also you can see the curly hair uh, bulged the big bulged eyes however they are half closed and here if you see the nose and the lips also they represent rather a greco roman tradition not indian tradition right so here it is the head of bodhisattva right next is fascinating uh, sorry fasting siddhartha so it is there in the lahore museum pakistan so uh, fasting buddha is depicted in a we can say uh, skeleton is uh, almost appearing of buddha so here he is fasting so still you will find here the greco roman traditions only and hal halo behind the head of the buddha see how beautifully it is represented when buddha was fasting so all his energy has disappeared all the muscle muscle is disappeared how bones of the buddha are appearing right this is the image of fasting buddha it is there in lahore museum now right right so this buddha represents the period where uh, self modification of buddha before he achieved before i mean few days before he was he achieved uh, achieved uh, enlightenment right another example is 
fifth casket with the scenes from the life of buddha it is also there in british media museum london so this is an elaborately carved first century uh, casket showcasing the uh, gandharan expertise in narrative reliefs it depicts various scenes from the life of buddha or buddha's life including his birth enlightenment and the first sermon so his first sermon here it is it happened in saranath right so this panel depicts various uh, <coughs> life stages of buddha including his birth his uh, penance or uh, his first sermon also his death also it is depicted right so this is about the uh, uh, gandhara school of art majorly here you remember the characteristic features of that particular school of art so you should also in a position to do a comparative analysis of the three schools of art so try to uh, also keep that in mind next is mathura school of art it is another prominent school of art in ancient india right right so flourishing period and the locations if you see it is flourished between first and third century bc uh, so it is centered around mathura in present day uttar pradesh india so however uh, it spread into all nearby areas and you will find the uh, making of the uh, buddha or we can say the mathura school of sculptures in in and around the area of mathura so here another difference is in gandhara school of art you will mostly find the uh, only theme is that is buddhism theme is only buddhism there but here in mathura school of art you will find sculptures of three dominant religions at that times that is buddhism hinduism and jainism so all the uh, sculptures relating to all the three religions you will find in the mathura school of art right so features if you see uh, you will see material material used is red sand stone because at mathura red red sand stone is abundantly available so not only in the ancient time the moguls also to a large extent all their monuments are built in red sand stone only because it is plentifully available at the at the mathura right that is the need so uh, red sand stone it is a locally available and affordable material became the primary medium for sculptures and reliefs subject matter so uh, the theme is uh, has taken from various sources like buddha and bodhisattva for buddhist hindu and uh, hindu deities like shiva and vishnu for hinduism jain tirthankaras spiritual leaders from jainism and also yakshas uh, the nature spirits from indian mythology so theme varies elaborately when it comes to mathura school of art right so if you see the style you will see a blend of symbolism and narrative in the mathura school of art right so symbolic elements like uh, lotus pedestals representing purity and the dharma wheel signifying the buddha's teachings this will be their narrative reliefs like depicting story, stories from indian epics religious texts and even from the jataka tales right evolving uh, buddha depiction also you will see so buddha depiction has evolved like early depictions were symbolic lacking physical details and often represented by empty throne or stupa that is there so apart from that gradually uh, by the kushan period more human features were incorporated but with an emphasis on serenely and a spiritual presence often with uh, large shoulders and a peaceful expression that you will find in the mathura school of art so up uh, additional uh, characteristics you will see boldness in the carving so it features large impressive sculptures with a sense of volume and presence drapery so clothing clothing are often depicted realistically with the clear folds and the drapery covering the left shoulder of the sculptures so heaviness reduced so while figures have a sense of physicality overall impression is one of relaxed posture and flowing form you will see right so these are the uh, distinct characteristic features of mathura school of art right so you will majorly see you will uh, fleshy fleshy body not the muscular body you will see 
uh, peaceness or calmness in the facial expressions of buddha there is not curly it is not that much uh, represented and uh, hollowness also you will you will also find the hollow uh, behind the head here also right and drapery is also present but da- not that much drapery is uh, there compared to gandhara school of art locations mathura in uttar pradesh kanakali tila it is also the, uh, here also you will find the sculptures mathura museum kesava deva temple so at all these link, uh, locations including the sarnath uh, ashoka ashoka pillar also dhamak stoop also and at koshambi uttar pradesh you will find the uh, sculptures uh, belonging to the mathura school of art best example if you see famous examples yaksha statue from mathura it is uh, ska- uh, i mean uh, it is carved around 2nd century bc right so this is the figure in of uh, figure or figure in of yaksha yaksha statue so it exemplifies the sensuous and natural naturalistic style of mathura school of art next example is seated buddha from mathura it is uh, i mean carved in the uh, kushan period so this uh, shokas is the evolution of buddha depiction in mathura it retains uh, an otherworldly quality with the symbolic elements like large usnisa etc right so this is about the uh, seated buddha from mathura next example is kankali tila stupa uh, reliefs so these are the reliefs de- uh, depicted on this stupa so here you will see jataka tales uh, the relief relief depicting jataka tales and the scenes from buddha's life in a narrative style uh, characteristic of the mathura school so in mathura school you will also find the narrative styles so if you see an entire panel a story will be told with the depictions in that so different different scenes will be depicted from a mythology from a book or from a jataka tale if you see the entire panel you will understand a story so through panels they are trying to tell a story that is known as narrative style right next example is a uh, lotus headed uh, brahmani statue right so this captivating sculpture from madura it depicts a hindu goddess goddess with a lotus flower as her head so causing the madura schools diverse subject matter right so this is about the mathura school of art now the third in the major category of schools of art that is amaravati school of art it is flourished in present day andhra pradesh right so it offering a distinct perspective compared with the gandhara and mathura schools so if you see the period it flourished between 2nd century bc to 3rd century ad right so it's a peak under the satavahana dynasty and later during the ikshvakus also you will find this patronage for this art right so it is centered in amravati right it was earlier known as dhanya kataka right so it is a town in the lower krishna river in andhra pradesh right so it the for the later part of the it is the later capital of the uh, satavahanas so if you see the key characteristics of this school of art so it focuses on south indian buddhism Uh, and boasts several distinct characteristics uh, features so marble uh, material used is white marble so this is the very 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 important aspect here the material used is white marble right so it uh, the white marble it is giving sculptures a luminous quality sandstone was also used but to a lesser extent uh, it has south indian roots it flourished in amravati right so this you know very well next style if you see naturalistic representation narrative narratives are there just like mathura school of art but here you will see elaborate the narrative is very very elaborate right however there is also a balance for religious and secular sculpture so not only religious aspects are depicted but also the secular aspects of life like hunting day to day to day life activities of people etc all these things are de- depicted in this culture of the amaravati school of art right so another characteristic features if you see delicate forms and the linear grace is there 
and the prominence of human figures is there uh, symbolic representation of buddha is also there like in the form of elephant in the form of lotus in the form of empty throne etc so symbolic representation of buddha is also there right famous examples are amaravati stupa relief so amaravati uh, stupa is no more there it has been damaged because of the uh, uh, time related events however you will see the uh, reliefs here and there you will uh, find the parts of stupa so this is one of that right so it is a magnificent marble relief from great stupa at amaravati they depict various scenes from the life of buddha and jataka tales so here you will find the intricate carving right so this is for storytelling so it is part and parcel of the narrative style next is the indra sabha or the indra slab it is particularly famous uh, for aravari uh, uh, amravati relief shoka singh indra the king of gods in hinduism and buddhism so he is participating in a ceremony right so this panel you will see in the indra slab next is uh, worshiping bodhisattva so this is the figure in of bodhisattva about bodhisattvas i will, i was uh, i told so these are the bodhisattvas are previous births of buddha right they are mentioned in detail about uh, in the jataka tales so in amaravati school of art also you will find the bodhisattvas and the depiction of bodhisattvas so significance if you see it played a crucial role in the development of buddhist art in south india in the southeast asia also its influence can be seen in artistic traditions of sri lanka and indonesia also right so they have adopted mostly naturalistic style uh, it is still being uh, i mean adopted and continued by the people who are, i mean in the south indian region all right so this is about the amravati school of art so broadly i have tried to put the differences in a table so period flourishing period if you see uh, sorry gandhara school of art flourishing period 1st century bc to 7th century ad uh, mathura school 3rd century bc to 3rd century ac amravati 2nd bc 2nd bc to 3rd ac regions it is northwestern india afghanistan mathura school uttar pradesh amravati school andhra pradesh material here cist material is used here red sandstone uh in the amravati school it is white marble right next subject matter if you see lord buddha and bodhisattvas so it is entirely dedicated to buddhism only right here if you see in mathura school of art buddha bodhisattvas hinduism jain tirthankaras they are depicted so if you see amaravati school of art uh, art scenes from buddha's life jataka tales are depicted style the greek or roman influence is there human form of buddha also you will see uh, in mathura school of art symbolic and narrative styles are taken evolving buddha depiction also you will see boldness in carving also you will see uh, in Am amaravati school natural naturalistic representation narrative excellence and the balance of religious and secular uh, uh, sculpture you will see so these are the major differences in the uh, three schools of art All right so apart from that you will a uh, little bit you should know uh, also about the pala school of art palas you also know they are also the uh, patrons of buddhism right so they are not only uh, they are known for sculpture they are also known for paintings also so when we study the paintings we will study about the pala school of art right so if you see the time period it flourished between 8th century to 12th century ad right right so region if you see uh, it is centered in eastern indian region uh, present day encompassing present day bengal and bihar right so key characteristics if you see the primary material the primarily cast bronze and the black basalt are the uh, major materials used here right cast bronze so idols small idols were made with bronze and you will also see black basalt so this is a kind of stone so sculpting of uh, images of buddha uh, in the black basalt 
right subject matter so it is predominantly buddhist featuring buddha bodhisattvas and the ta- tantric deities so you will know by the medieval time by the 18th century there have been n number of uh six in the buddhism have come so tantrism also developed in uh, buddhism that is mostly practiced in uh, now present day tibet tibet so it was there in the uh, i mean during that time medieval time it was there popular in the bihar bengal regions also right so however here and there hindu deities were also depicted style if you see elegance and the serenity was there proportions and anonymity was properly maintained so compared to previous schools pala art displayed a greater focus on balanced proportions and a more realistic understanding of human autonomy apart from that you will also see elaborate ornaments and the narrative reliefs also you will find but these are not promin- not as prominent as in the earlier schools but still the narrative reliefs you will also find in the pala school of art best examples are parvati bronze statue right this is an exquisite 9th century sculpture right so it exemplifies delicate features intricate jewelry and the flowing drapery uh, characteristic uh, it is the characteristic feature of the pala school of art right next is uh, colossal stone buddha statue from sultan ganj right so this is the 18th century uh, statue it showcases the monumentary monumentality and the serene presence of pala stone sculptures right next is manjushri uh, with the flaming sword so here manjushri uh, it is also the bodhisattva previous birth of buddha, buddha. so you will see with a uh, his depiction with a sword flaming sword so this is a 10th uh, 10th uh, century bronze it depicts bodhisattva manjushri showcasing the pala style's ability to capture movement and emotion so this image is uh, dynamically depicted i mean you will see the movement of the sword so this image shows the excellence achieved at that time right right so this is about the pala school of art and finally you will see the chola school of art so it flourished between the 9th century to 13th century ad right so it's a peak it reached its peak during the rajaraja chola 1 and the rajendra chola 1 so it is centered around tamil nadu uh, i mean I, i told already its best depiction is the bronze bronze idols of nataraja bronze idols of nataraja right the so material used is primarily bronze showcasing the chola's mastery of casting techniques so uh, you will you will see the use of lost wax process or lost wax method lost wax method uh, in making of these uh, uh, what would i say the images of nataraja so you might be knowing uh, the lost wax method first the image that uh, de- desired image of the idol made with uh, wax and uh, once uh, the image is made with wax once the image is made with wax right so once the image is made with wax it will be covered in clay the image will be covered with clay right so uh, somewhere a small hole will be created and the image then is heated so once heated the entire wax that is there in this it will be melted and the melted wax will be removed through this small hole so after uh, removing all the melted melted wax uh, the melted bronze bronze liquid will be poured into that burnt clay so right so once the metal enters into the clay it will take the shape of the wax earlier wax shape it will take so once uh, the uh, uh, we can say the metal is frozen uh, the uh, out, outside clay is removed so then you will get the bronze idol so this is known as the lost wax method or lost wax process so in this technique the idols have been casted 
subject matter so it is predominantly hindu with a focus on shiva right so the supreme deity of cholas other hindu deities like vishnu parvati ganesha they are also depicted so if you see the style of this uh, uh, school uh, monumentality and dynamism you will find in the images monumentality and dynamism will be there exquisite details and proportion is given care taken care here sensuous beauty will be there lost wax technique is used these are the important features right so famous examples if you see the nataraja sculptures from nataraja temple chidambaram so it is an iconic 10th century bronze it depicts shiva as nataraja the cosmic dancer right here in the image you will see the image of the nataraja from the chidambaram temple right there next image uh, i think that image has been lost another at other image shiva has been depicted as the bikshatana movie bikshatana murti i mean shiva you will see him in the begging form right this image i think it is misplaced so it is another image so in that image shiva has been depicted as the bikshatana murti shiva in the begging uh, begging form that is also a great image and uh, another image parvati bronze from the uh, metropolitan museum of art so presently it is there uh, the uh, image is there at, in that museum it is an exquisite sculpture showcases the sensuality and elegance of chola female figures so this is the parvati image uh, that is there presently it is there in the metropolitan museum art chola right. so this is about the chola school of art right so i hope uh, you have got some uh, important information from the school of art so this topic it is not only important uh, from the prelims point of view it is very very important from the mains aspect also because art and architecture specially mentioned in the main syllabus so their sculpture has given lot of importance so you might get a question from the sculpture topic also so there you will be asked to do a comparative analysis of the three schools of art the amaravati sorry the gandhara school of art the mathura school of art and the amaravati school of art or either you can be asked about any particular school that is pala school and the chola school of art also right so this is it for today thank you thank you for joining the class uh, see you tomorrow until then Thank you.